Welcome to the All Means All podcast. It's Pentecost. That's 50 days after Jesus' death. We have the moment where we celebrate the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit comes. Jesus gifts us the Holy Spirit. And the church is born. If you open your Bible and look at the book of Acts, you can read all about it. Just even chapter 1, you'll read the story. Today, thanks for joining us for Pentecost worship. One day, an unbeliever came to the rabbi and asked the rabbi, who created the world? Good question. Who created the world? The rabbi said, the creator, the spirit created the world. The one with the question said, what proof do you have? The rabbi said, come back tomorrow and I'll have proof. The next day, the one with a question comes before the rabbi, and the rabbi greets him and says, that's a beautiful coat you're wearing. Who made it? The one with the question said, well, the tailor made the coat. Of course. What proof do you have the tailor made it, said the rabbi. Everybody knows tailors make coats, said the one with the question. And the rabbi replied, everyone knows tailors make coats and carpenters make furniture and creators create. The spirit created. It is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the time where we put out all the red and we celebrate for a moment the spirit. In, in, in Protestantism, it's a moment because we, we're a little worried about too much of the Spirit. <laughs> so we'll put the red away as quick as we can and move on. But for a moment, we celebrate the Spirit of God. Remember the old hymn, Spirit of the Living God? Let's just take a moment and sing that together. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me melt me, mold me melt me mold me fill me, use me, fill me use me It's the day when the Spirit of God, which has been promised, comes. But before we get to Pentecost, I want to keep you for a little while in that land in between, between Easter and Pentecost, 50 days. 50 days between the celebration of resurrection, of life beyond life, and what's next. And the land in between can be a tough place. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all give us the amazing Easter story. Jesus is not here. The tomb is empty. He is risen. The crucified one, Jesus, appears to the women as they come to the tomb. Jesus appears to those on the walk to Emmaus. Jesus appears to them, and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Jesus appears to Simon and the tw disciples on the beach, and Simon Peter's reinstated. He appears to Thomas, and Thomas, with his doubts, continues to follow. The book of Acts says there are over 40 appearances that take place in those days. And then Jesus gives us instruction, which is unique. At, in the beginning of the book of Acts, Jesus says to his followers, wait here. Are you good at waiting? Wait here in Jerusalem. Wait here in the place of your greatest fear and your greatest pain. 
I mean, Jerusalem was where Jesus was arrested. Jerusalem's where Jesus was crucified. Wait here. Jerusalem's where it all fell apart. Wait here, and you will receive power. Wow. You receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then as Jesus finishes this speech, the ascension takes place. He's taken up into the sky right in front of their eyes. Wow. And we get this text, and that's where I want to start today. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. We'll put it up here on the screen. Let's read these holy words out loud together. Read with me. They said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? Now, now we could answer for the Galileans because Jesus just went up. I mean, my guess is if at the end of the service, for some reason, Steve couldn't figure out how to make this happen. If I just went up, <laughs> you would stand here for a minute going, where did he go? How did that happen? And so we get that they're perplexed, they're, they're, they're stuck in this unique holy moment just looking at the sky i think back to the gospel of john when jesus is resurrected and mary meets the resurrected jesus she hugs him and tries to cling to him jesus says do not hold on to me mary do not cling to me and i think pentecost is one of those moments where we still want to cling to the Jesus that's here, the Jesus we know, the Jesus that walks with us and eats with us, the Jesus that talks to us, the Jesus that's present. And Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to go, but I'm sending you a gift. Wait. Wait till you receive power, till you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, this is the Pentecost story, verse 1. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. They've been waiting. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through the ranks. They started speaking in a number of different languages and the, as the Spirit prompted them. Spirit fall afresh on me. You know, it's a little uncomfortable in some ways when we sing that because if we have a sense that when the Spirit falls afresh, unique things happen. Things that aren't comfortable sometimes happen. The book of Genesis tells us that when God created the earthling from the earth, it was only when the Spirit of God was breathed into him that life began. The Ruach, the breath of God, gave life. Spirit gives life. In the New Testament, John chapter 16, Jesus is telling his disciples, this is way before crucifixion, way before resurrection. He says, look, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and then they're going to crucify me, and I'm out of here. And that's a good thing, because then I can send the Spirit to you, the paraclete, the, the advocate, the helper, the defender, the comforter, literally in Greek, the one who comes alongside, the companion. So as you think about the Holy Spirit today, I want you to consider these possibilities. The Holy Spirit is in every human being. Not every Christian human being. Every, if, if God is what gives us life, then everyone contains the Spirit. You might say, well, I know some people that haven't activated it yet. <laughs> and you might be true. But the Spirit of God, the potential of God is in every human being. Cultivation of that spirit is up to you. How do you, as you walk with God, as you live this faith, how do you cultivate the spirit of God? I, I would tell you this week, I was having a pretty tough day. And on that day, two friends from different parts of the country, one from New York State, one from Ohio, just called. 
And both of them said similar things. I just felt like God wanted me to call you today. And I said, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Spirit. Thank you. You don't know how much I needed this call. And sometimes, and then the next day, it was a, a note of encouragement from the member, a member of our church who often is good at encouraging and just sends me a note every now and then. And it was just a note again. And I thought, thank you for listening to the Spirit. How do you cultivate the Spirit of God in you? The third thing is the Spirit is the author of spontaneity, of ecstasy, but also of restraint and study and silence. Wow. In some ways you'd say none of that fits together. And that is the Spirit. Go back to Pentecost. Spirit comes, violent wind. People see tongues of fire dancing on other people's heads. You would remember that worship service. I mean, if when the choir sang, they didn't just look red, but tongues of fire were on their heads, we'd say, something different's happening today. It might explain where some of my hair went, right? There is no ecstasy, though, for ecstasy's sake. Some of our brothers and sisters in Christ have missed this point and they think that the spirit is about just excitement and it's about power and it's ecstasy for ecstasy's sake. No, there's a purpose. I love the story continues. People are experiencing different languages and some on the outside don't know how to explain it. They say, these people are drunk. They're out of control. And I love Simon Peter's answer. When he stood up, one of the 12, he says, these people aren't drunk as you suppose. It's just nine in the morning. I love that because it's as if to say, well, if it was one o'clock. <laughs> these people, I know them. Yeah, they might be then. And then Peter quotes the prophet Joel from the Hebrew text in Acts chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit on all people. I mean, this is an all means all kind of moment. I will pour out my spirit on all people, on sons and daughters. They will prophesy. Men, old men will dream dreams. Even servants, men and women will receive my spirit. And then he shares more about Jesus. And in verse 38, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in Jesus' name. These are devoted people. They, they've already walked with Jesus. They've already seen some of them, the risen Christ. And he says, yet even they still need to receive the Spirit, the empowerment of God. They need to be baptized. And he says, so change the way you think. Repent. Change the way that you live. Change. And you too will receive the Holy Spirit. We need a new Pentecost in our world. Stay and wait. Wait in that place of pain. Wait in that place of uncomfortableness. Waiting is tough between the diagnosis and the, and the treatment. It's tough. Waiting between college and, and, and the job is tough. Waiting between this relationship and the next is tough. We need a new Pentecost. Persecution then comes to the church after the Spirit's given Sometimes we think if we walk with God, then nothing challenging ever happens. And I don't know why we think that. It's just not biblical. Read the scriptures. Challenges still come. Persecution breaks out in the church. The church is scattered throughout the known world at the time. But the Holy Spirit has empowered. And I love this story. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. You'll remember the story. Philip. Philip. An angel of the Lord said to him, go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip is listening to the Spirit. I'd love to see your coworker's face when you say on Tuesday morning, how was your weekend? And you say, well, you know, an angel told me to do this. 
But remember, angel can be messenger. A messenger told me. Someone with a word told me. And sometimes that's the people we deeply love. They speak truth into our lives. Sometimes it's a stranger that somehow knows exactly what to say. Sometimes it's in, maybe it is an angel. Go south down the desert road that turns, runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, he met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great power, great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. So he has this encounter. Now, before he receives the Spirit, Christians, before we receive the Spirit, I would say anyone, before they receive the Spirit, we use religion to divide. We use religion to conquer. We use religion to say who doesn't belong. But after receiving the Spirit, there's a change. Philip sees someone different, an Ethiopian eunuch, probably complexion's different. He sees someone whose sexuality's different, and maybe he wouldn't know that unless they told him. And he encounters them hungering for God. As they ride in the chariot, they're reading the scripture, and Philip comes alongside him and says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I? How can I if no one would help me? That, there's your best model, Pastor Irene, for small groups. If I try to do this by myself, how can I understand? But if I walk with someone else, maybe I can understand. So they have a great conversation, and the Spirit expands our understanding of God's love as they talk more and more. Maybe, maybe Philip's remembering Isaiah's words from Isaiah 56, that one day Jews and Gentiles, even eunuchs, will be included in my house, for my house is called a house of prayer for all people. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that disciples could not include if you go, go back to just Luke chapter 9, the disciples see some other people speaking in Jesus' name. You might think that'd be enough. Speaking in Jesus' name, and they go, but they're not from our group. So they say to Jesus, after, I mean, don't you love this? After walking with Jesus, their question to Jesus is, can we call God to rain down fire from heaven and kill them? <laughs> And you wonder sometimes why some of our Christian friends don't get it. And sometimes our Christian friends wonder why we don't get it. Because sometimes we haven't been open to being baptized in the Spirit. The Spirit leads to inclusion and unity. After they have this conversation, you might remember the eunuch is riding with Philip and he points to some water and says, there's some water, may I be baptized? He's pushing the envelope here. Can you really include me in your journey of faith? Or is this, we love everyone, but until you change and become like us, can you really include me? And they stop and Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch. He's, he's not very Methodist in this moment. He, would, he did not call for a study commission. He did not petition general conference. He just moves by the Spirit and includes one that religion has excluded. In the land in between, it can be a tough place. But Pentecost comes and empowers us with the gift of the Holy Spirit that we might be moved into action, bringing the kingdom of God here on earth as in heaven. Well, I want to end with this litany that we'll put up on the screen. I invite you to join me. We see the norming of weekly gun violence in our world and in our schools, and we reply, we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a different world. We see the needs of our world at the border and in Boise. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a different world. 
We see the challenges of lack of affordable housing and health care for all. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a different world. We see the challenges of racism, classism, sexism, and politics, tribal politics, and we say we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a different world. So a week from Saturday, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a different world as we gather and swing hammers for two or three hours as we frame one house and for one family the world will always be different because they now have a home that they can own. Wow. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit rain down on us. Drench us with the possibilities of inclusion. Drench us with the possibilities of unity. Drench us in ways that we can hear the gospel on earth as in heaven, you have empowered us to make a different world. And we give you thanks. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for listening to the All Means All podcast. You may have noticed today we celebrated Pentecost and we're doing a, a special offering. And whether you're part of us here in Boise or whether you're in Virginia or New Mexico, or California, we don't care where you are. If you're part of the Cathedral of the Rockies, we're glad to have you participate in worship and also through your giving. This Sunday, we gave a special offering to our Legacy Foundation. We're trying to give enough money so that the church can continue to remake itself in the future. So maybe you wanna make a gift to celebrate our 150 years right here in Boise. Maybe you want to put $150 on a check or go to the website and do $1,500. Or maybe you want to do $1.50, whatever you want to do, or a million five. Whatever you want to do with one five in it, we will celebrate. Thank you for being the church, and thank you for your generosity. Together, we'll make a different world.